We've spent a couple of lessons talking about two specific transcendental functions, y equals e to the x and y equals the natural log of x. So now we're going to cover the other exponential functions, just general exponential functions and general logarithmic functions. So these are of the form y equals a to the x, where a can be any positive real number greater than zero and a does not equal one. So these are the general exponential functions. Remember the properties that we learned back in, probably in Algebra 2 is where we learned most of these or, or worked with them a lot. And so we're just going to review these really quickly because these are properties that you may need to use in this context. When we multiply the same bases, we add the exponents. When we have the same base, it is the exponent in the numerator minus the exponent in the denominator, all raised to that same base. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply the powers. When we have a product raised to a power, that power will distribute over multiplication. So it is true that it's the first factor raised to the power times the second factor raised to the power. And additionally, the power will break up over division. Now, it is not true ever that a power breaks up over addition. This is not a true statement and it's never true that it breaks up over subtraction. Don't give these exponential functions properties that they don't actually have, so be very careful of that. The, the power only breaks up over multiplication and division. And so it is true that the general exponential function maintains all the previous properties we already know, and then we'll bring calculus into the discussion as well. So here is just the, the definition of the general exponential function. Another reason why I cover e to the x thoroughly before we get to just general exponential functions is because it's used in the definition. So we want to give meaning to what a to the x means for positive basis for and any real number x. And so for a positive base and any real number x, it is true that a to the x is e to the x times the natural log of a. And that is one step that we may have sort of left off here is we're using the inverse functions e and natural log. And we're feeding natural log a to the x and then we're feeding that result to the e function. And since those do undo each other, since they are inverse functions, then this does equal a to the x. We are additionally using that property of the logarithm that says we get to pop that exponent down front and turn it into a product. So that's where this is coming from. So that's a definition for a to the x. And now we're going to use this definition when we try to develop what the derivative of any general transcendental exponential function is. So if we want the derivative with respect to x of a to the x, we are just going to use this definition. Why? Because we know the derivative of e to the u already. And so we're going to use that knowledge to find the derivative of a to the x. Remember, we can do this because those two functions are inverses of one another. So we're going to pop that power down front. We're going to use that property of the natural log. And so now we have really the derivative with respect to x of e to the u where u equals x times the natural log of a. Remember, when a is any real number, the natural log of a is just some constant. It's a coefficient that we can pop out front. So now let's take the derivative using the chain rule. That's the derivative of the outside, so that's e, not changing the inside, and then times the derivative of what's inside. And remember, that's just the natural log of a, some real number value, times x. So what that cleans up to is e to the u times the natural log of a, because the derivative with respect to x of x times the natural log of a, when this is just some real number value, is pop this out front, the natural log of a, times the derivative with respect to x of x, which is just 
1. So we wind up with the natural log of a times 1. So that's why this is du dx. Now we're going to drop the e and the natural log. We're going to drop the definition and we're going to go back to the original form that it was given to us in. So here is the derivative with respect to x of a to the x. Again, I want you to put it in your notes incorporating the chain rule because we could have some real number base where we have fed an expression in x. And so once again, just like e, there's the outside, whatever that real number value is, and u is the inside. So we can clearly see it's the derivative of the outside, which here's the outside. There's the derivative of the outside. That's included in there. Uh, not changing the inside times the derivative of what's inside. So now you just have to remember that it is a to the u times the natural log of a. Let me just interject here just one minute. And uh, I want you to realize that e also has to follow this rule. And do we recognize why we don't worry about that factor that is the natural log of the base? Why does that not show up when we said the derivative of e to the u was e to the u times du dx? Well, what is this value? Remember, the natural log of e to the 1 is just 1. So e is also following this rule. And it wasn't quite apparent that this was going on when we were dealing with the e function. But it's definitely going on when we have any other base besides e. So make sure all that is in your notes. It follows that since this is the derivative of a to the u, that if we are integrating a to the u, then the derivative function actually should have been a to the u times that constant natural log of a times du. And if it's absent, if that's not in there, then we're going to have to keep up with it in the antiderivative. So the antiderivative for a to the u using u substitution is 1 over the natural log of the base. That's just a real number. That's a coefficient we get to pop out front. And it's times a to the u plus c. All right, so there is the derivative of the general exponential function, the antiderivative of the general exponential function, and now let's talk about the general logarithmic function. Here is a logarithm of, as opposed to the logarithm we've been working with so far was the log base e. So we know a lot about log base e. Now we're going to bring in log base a, just any other base of our logarithm other than e. And the process that we're going to use for finding the derivative is we're always going to use the change of base formula. So the first thing that we'll do if we have a base anything other than e, we're going to use the change of base formula and put it in terms of natural log. Again, one of the reasons why I cover the derivative and antiderivative for the natural log before I do for the general logarithmic function. So we're going to use that. Also recognize that 1 over the natural log of a is just some real number value because a is a real number value. That's a coefficient we can pop out front. So when we take the derivative of that, we can pop that constant out front, and then we're just taking the derivative of the natural log of u with respect to x. So it's the derivative of the outside, remember, which is 1 over not changing the inside, which is whatever expression's been fed into the natural log function, times the derivative of what's inside, and then we have that coefficient from the change of base formula that we popped out front from our different base other than e. Again, log base e of x has to follow the same rule, but understand now we have 1 over the natural log of e times the natural log of x, which again, that's just 1. So that's why that wasn't really quite apparent when we had a base of e. Okay, so make sure all of these are in your notes. I prefer this form. It does actually clean up and look like this, 1 over u times 1 over the natural log of a. But 
this form is what I prefer because it allows me to handle and get that constant out front and then I'm just down to what I knew was the derivative for the natural log of u which was 1 over u times du dx. So make sure that's in your notes. So let's work a couple of examples here. Here's our first one. If we have a log base 10, this is a general logarithmic function to a base other than e, and they want us to find the derivative. Step number one is always to use the change of base formula. It's the first thing we're going to do, the first step we're going to do before we even bring dy dx into it. And so remember, it's the natural log of the expression over the natural log of the base. And 1 over the natural log of 10 is just a real number value. So I'm going to pop it out front, and then I'm left with the natural log expression that I can take the derivative of. So the derivative with respect to x of 1 over the natural log of 10 times the natural log of the quantity x to the fourth plus 13 is going to look like this. I'm going to pop my constant out front, and then it is the derivative of the outside, not changing the inside, times the derivative of what's inside. So there's the derivative of this general logarithmic function. Remember, you're always going to use the change of base formula first, okay? So use the change of base formula. All right, please understand, for some reason students tend to try to get this confused. There is a difference in the derivative between the rule for exponential functions and the rule for power functions. And it has everything to do with where your number versus where your variable is. If you have a numerical base and your variable is up in the exponent, that's an exponential function. If you have a variable as a base and your number is up in the exponent, that's a power function. And they have two completely different rules for finding the derivative. A to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a, or times the natural log of the base. x to the a is a power rule. It's a power function. The power pops down front, and you reduce the power by 1. So we would never say that if we had y equals 3 to the x, we would never say, it is not true, that dy dx equals x times 3 to the x minus 1. You cannot use the power rule for an exponential function, and I see this quite often. So make sure that you have all of these different rules. This is a great time to make flashcards and make sure you understand the rule for exponential function derivatives and the power rule for derivatives. All right, so what about this unnamed function? What about a function that has a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent? What can we do in order to find the derivative of that? Is that an exponential function? Is it a power function? It's got a variable base, so maybe it's a power function. Well, it's got a variable exponent. Maybe it's an exponential function. It's actually an unnamed function, and it's neither. It doesn't follow either of the rules that we know for the other types of functions. And we're going to actually find this derivative using logarithmic differentiation. But I'm going to stop here. We'll walk through this step by step in another video. This is a good place to stop, and then we'll have some examples that we can work as well. So look for the next video.